Cameron Batson. Batson. Uh, Cameron. Yeah, we obviously d led like any, any move we make, we're always going to do it what we feel is the best interest of the team. So it's like a lot of the transactions we've had around here. Serve as kind of a reminder to guys that you know, hey, when you're out in public, maybe you can. Oh, do you I mean? Look, it, there's there's an ongoing legal situation. You know, I'm not privy to all the facts, so I'm not going to get in there and comment on any ongoing legal situation. Well, um, on to yesterday, wrapping that up. Uh, this was going over the first uh, drive and the last drive. Um, you know, what did it say about the unit that they overcame the? The, the, the penalty to one and 18 and tech second and 23. Yeah. You know, we unfortunately, you know, you get off track and you, and you got to be able to overcome it. I mean, it's, it's allows you to, to essentially get points. I mean, so that first drive, uh, you know, the way the game started, I think both teams had too long, you know, one, a possession each. And uh, it was nice to be able to do that, to be able to chip away at it, overcome it, go down there and score a touchdown. And then same thing at the end of the game. <laughs> Be able to not only uh, win the game, but to be able to handle that situation, force them to use their timeouts, being able to, to get that first down, play in that situation, and, and having Koo come in there and knock it, knock it through and leave them no time to do anything. On that first drive, again, uh, you get the 16 yarder, uh, and then what do you see on the third and seven? Or do you get the run outside from Algier? And what, you know, yeah, I mean, it's just, a, it's just trying to maintain a nice balance and not try not to become obvious, you know. So when you take those risks when you're doing that, there are certain things maybe you want to attack to see what their rush plan is or make them keep them keep them honest as well. So they just don't think they can collapse the pocket. So those are the games you're playing. Um, but it's nice to be able to convert those, certainly. And two plays on the last drive, the big 22-yard run that kind of gets you across midfield. Uh, how big was that to kind of jumpstart things? Yeah, it's huge. Right, I mean, to be able to create explosive like that uh, on the ground. Uh, you know, CP did a great job pressing that, hitting that in the, in the line. I thought they battled up front, you know, Arizona. It's a prideful group, especially on that defensive side. They were they were bringing everything they had up front, and uh, it was a good back and forth. I thought that was good. Our guys played physical. If they had been, it was nice to see Matt Ensey get in there, you know, and contribute. We had a lot of different guys at left guard, and, and I thought Matt uh, – you know, he played played well in that spot, and it was good to see. And, uh, I just on the last drive. Um, the, the third down throw, how big was that for Desmond to get a uh, Pruitt, uh, you know, yeah. third and seven, or, or you got to get, to get a little closer? And right. Better, you know, we could have gone super conservative and, and run it and see what happens and force him to use a timeout. And, you know, percentages are used. We decided to be aggressive and say, well, let's trust Desmond in this unit. And, um I would mean, like the way he had been operating. I mean, it's three games in a row um, where I thought in the fourth quarter when you need him, I thought he, he's been that great poise and demeanor. And uh, so it shows the trust that we have in him in the offensive unit. In terms of what you mentioned, Hennessy at left guard, that's one spot. Elijah's going to be a free agent after the season. Have you seen enough from Hennessy where you could say maybe he's – a, sol a solution there for you guys? Well, we'll continue to, to, to look at them all, Michael, you know, but in the offseason. But, uh, you know, I'm just happy for Matt. You know, it, it battled. You know, he started last year at center for us. He got in a competitive battle with Drew. He handled it the right way. He's kept chipping away. And it's, you know, a position that he played a little bit early when he was drafted in training camp and uh, certainly valuable for us. But it's too early to make any assessments like that for any offseason. But I'm glad Matt's here. And I'm glad he was able to, to contribute, and I'm, I was really happy for him. As far as Avery goes, I mean, yeah, I don't, you know, we'll, we'll see when we get into Wednesday. Nothing that right today would say, hey, look, uh, some major news. We'll just monitor it, and you know, we'll put it on the Wednesday report. When you have a guy, I mean, whether it's Avery or other guys who are banged up heading into the last week, I know how you feel about winning games, but when it's the last week of the season, do you kind of say, hey, listen, okay? You're banged up. It wouldn't matter if it was week two. We wouldn't put a guy out there if it was going to, you know, cause him further damage, injury, or any, at risk for anything. So that's whether it's week 18 or week two, uh, it's, we'll do what's in the best interest of the player and their health. And then obviously, you know, that's so that won't change whether it's week 18 or week one. I guess I was just asking if you felt like you maybe become more cautious. 
in Again, I just go back to the same thing I just said, Michael. We're, we're, we're paid to do a job, trying to, to win games, all of us. And, and again, we won't put a guy, a player will not go on that field if it's not in the best interest of him and, his, and the health or anything like that. So that's not going to change. This was yet, uh, yet another game where, where Michael Pruitt showed up in a big moment. Mm -hmm. This is a guy that was on the practice squad, was a late sign. You obviously have a history with him. But yes. How, how did he kind of earn this opportunity, and obviously what has he done with it? Well, we, got, we put a lot on the, the plates of our tight ends. You know, they all have different skill sets. And uh, Michael was a guy that, you know, I, I coached in Tennessee. Uh, we picked him up at 18 off Houston's uh, practice squad. Uh, you know, Mike Vrabel we had some experience with him, and we had lost Delaney Walker, and we got him on the practice squad. And he he had been around. You know, he'd been in Minnesota, had been in Chicago. Um, good skill set coming out of college. And sometimes it takes a while for those guys to find a, find a role. I mean, it's it's a tough position to play, depending, especially depending on your scheme. You know, you're talking about a guy who maybe just be a receiver coming out of college, and you're trying to put him in line, or vice versa. Uh, I think he's a very smart, instinctive player. He played some really meaningful snaps for us. Uh, he, he had a pretty bad injury last year, so that was part of the reason he he hadn't signed with anybody yet. And uh, he's taking advantage of the opportunity here. And obviously, we've got a lot of trust in him, and clearly Desmond does too. Going back to the second quarter specifically, when the fumble happens and then Arizona goes and scores, right. Desmond comes back out, connects, I think, on seven of eight of those passes in that next drive. I know that drive didn't result in any points, but what did you kind of see from Desmond in that kind of sequence? Yeah, the same thing that we saw, I think, early on and in his history. You know, he is a resilient, and that's part of it. I mean, you know, you're going to have – Things, I mean, nothing intentional, trust me. I mean, you don't certainly, there's a lot of ways that some turnovers that guys make a play, but the self inflicted ones, it's uh, operationally. So he makes, you know, makes a mistake and and they, they take advantage of it and he's able to overcome it. But I do, that's some of the things I do appreciate about him, Tori. So he's able to do that, chipped away. And, you know, we were aggressive of going for it on fourth and two. That's the risk you take. And then the defense can bail you out. They played the field position. Well, and then we were able to get the block, and that was a huge kind of offset to that turnover for us. And that was a it was a good design by Marquise and and Hoff, and they and I. If you really if you watch that again, what Hodge made that play, and then Richie did a nice job coming off, taking off the foot. So it's a well it was a well coordinated effort by Marquise, and then those guys executed really well. And that was a you know huge, which kind of offset that penalty, and then you know going for and fourth down, being able to play that situation. A lot of big special teams moments over the course of the year, from the from the CP touchdown, the block punts, the block field goal, and fall to right. About what you're getting from your coaches and the buy-in from your players that are allowing you guys to make these kind of big pivotal well, plays. That's everything. I'm finding advantage everywhere. I mean, that's what you want to play in every phase, every down. So critical. If you feel like you can get any advantage in some of the stuff when you're roster building, you've got young players that may not be playing. You know, a ton of snaps. And those those possessions and those snaps are so valuable, and they change. They do change games, and something we put a lot of emphasis in. And um, I think that's where we've gotten better depth this year. You know, some of the younger players we've got that are contributing certainly help. Um, and that, yeah, so any advantage we can get, that's all we're looking for. You know, Avery's done a nice job with the punt returns, and uh, you know, field position there. It all matters. I didn't ask about this yesterday. Chris Lindstrom picked up his first holding penalty in four years. Like, what is you were as a former offensive lineman? Like, how rare is that? And like, how much skill goes into <coughs> having that happen? Just because you know, maybe see holding. The, the, the running joke is that holding can be called on every play, really. You know. Right. Um, well, Chris is such a technician. You know, and a lot of the stuff in there about hand placement, where it's at, and, you know, that one right there. And, out in space or whatever the optics of it, but uh, Chris does a nice job. I mean, he is a works really hard on his craft. He's got quick hands, and so a lot of guys. I mean, you see him the way he punches, he plays he plays the right way. His, his hands are usually inside. You know, there's some guys that are kind of clampers and they may not grab, and they're different styles and maybe. But uh, says a lot about Chris the way he plays. He was explaining yesterday that like he resets his hands basically almost 
every play. Is that you? This is me not knowing much about as much about offense play. But is that unique or is that? Like, it just depends on the player. Like I said, there's some guys that are massive. <coughs> They're able to just take guys down the middle, and you can't really move them, and they may not be the perfect te technicians inside, but I mean that's what it is. A guy like Chris, the hand-to-hand -hand combat, the, the stuff that happens in there, and it, it, I mean it's good on good. So when you get into the leverage, and guys are you may get inside, and they may work your hands, and the, the quickness he has to reset them. I mean that that there's an art to it. Uh, if you really get down and study it, and have an appreciation for it. Uh, I always joke if you play inside the line of scrimmage, is you're not a very well-adjusted person, and that's a good thing about football. That's why I love it. But uh, doesn't mean you can't be a great guy off the field. But there's some some measure things that happen inside, and Chris does a great job. He's pretty well adjusted. <laughs> yeah, you are well adjusted. I told when you when you when you're inside and to want to do that job, but uh, uh, that's what makes this game awesome. But no, that, that we got some great guys. It, I don't know when the, when the ball snapped. Yeah. Right? <laughs> it looked like uh, Isaiah Oliver rotated between corner and safety a bit yesterday. <coughs> uh, can you just talk about his? It's team? just about the scheme and the call. Okay. It's not necessarily he was lining up at safety. When you have a guy that can move around, that can play multiple spots, you know, he got the, the pressure, got the sack on the second play of the game. Uh, you know, as you see Zay coming back, and yesterday you could, he had a big impact on the game. And when you have a smart player that's versatile, understands the, the scheme and angles that certainly helps and I think he's gotten healthier um, and really happy for him he's another one of those guys you uh, fun to coach yeah, consistent so you know, I was happy to see that yesterday uh, coach was just counting the uh, set snaps for Ritter as they build up is uh, 207 a good sample size you might get another 60 I don't know what the perfect number is I mean it's uh -huh. just you know the improvement Functioning, you know, can he do the minimum job requirement? Is, you know, delivering the football and it's called on, and can he continue to improve? I mean, you can cut up stats however you need to. I mean, I'm certainly we want to improve in the passing attack and, and and be more balanced. I've talked about that a lot and be able to win games. I mean, he's done pretty well situationally, and uh, you know, we'll have another challenge Sunday against Tampa. You know, regardless of who's out there and what their strategy is, we'll. See how the week goes there. Uh, we got to get ready to play a really good scheme and really good defense. The last time you guys played Tampa, it was, I'll call it mildly controversial at the end, perhaps. Um, does that come up at all this week? No. There's no bearing on this game. You know, it would be a different set of circumstances. And, you know, it's a, it's a game we're looking forward to playing and try to get another one at home. Mentioned to us last week, and the stat continued that yesterday that the team has only given up more than ten points in the second half three times this season. Um, when you hear that, like, what does that kind of speak to you? Uh, I know obviously there's a, some of that's players, some of that's coaching. There's a lot of things. I mean, yeah, to be able to adjust, to be able to to win, you know, situational football. Uh, I talk about a lot those four, you know, four point swings where you get in there and guys are going to make plays, and certainly you'd love to hold people to under 100 yards and you know have three and outs all day but they get paid on the other side too so if that guy makes a play or you know in such you know situation they get up explosive off a off a uh, penalty which happens they get out of the red zone and be able to bow up and and uh try to get the ball back or at least make a kick a field goal so i think our guys have done a nice job with that certainly uh, i feel like in all three phases our staff does a nice job the players the communication to be able to adjust certainly not perfect uh, but but it's definitely encouraging. 